Spy can be a bit of an everywhere man. If a spy knows how to use his cloak effectively, he can just sort of show up from wherever, kill someone, and then just vanish in front of you to the point you swear he's somehow using ender pearls. Cloak is an invisibility mechanic, sure, but there are a whole lot of factors you have to take into account when using it, depending on what you're using it for. The cloak has two main uses, getting behind the enemy and escaping them. So in order to utilize it for those purposes, Let's go over how it works. Now, you have three options for the cloak, but let's just ignore these two and stick with stock, since it's the base stats. The end of this watch lasts 10 seconds at a full charge, but you can refill it mid-cloak by picking up ammo, but bumping into or taking damage from an enemy player will make you visible for a brief second, so ideally, you'll want to avoid that. Forward. Yeah, debuffs with a visual effect like Afterburn, Bleed, Mad Milk, or Jurati remain visible while you're cloaked. So don't bother cloaking while you're under their effects, right? WRONG! While you can be seen, being cloaked halves the duration of debuffs, thus getting rid of them quicker. Alongside this, you have a 20% damage resistance while cloaked, which in some cases might be just enough to keep you alive. Cloaking and decloaking takes a brief second and you have to be fully uncloaked before you can attack. Also, speaking of uncloaking, it makes a noise. We'll get back to this. Though while cloaked, the spy will not say any voice lines automatically, like reacting to the cart stopping or taking damage. However, voice commands retain their full functionality, allowing you to send the local intel NG into a psychiatric ward. This is the first use of Cloak, and the reason the spy can appear from pretty much wherever. The first thing you should do is avoid letting the enemy even know you're coming. Figure out where the main fights are happening, and start cloaking right before rounding the corner to where it is, so that nobody even sees you cloak. Typically, you want to take corners wide to avoid bumping into players that might be passing through, which is easy to do in open areas. You'll want to give the enemy as little information to work with to know when and where you're coming from, since it's a lot harder to stop a threat you don't even know is coming. But it's not impossible. <laughs> I've said this in other videos, but you really need to consider crossfire, especially from classes that like to spam explosives down choke points. Avoiding it comes down to your movement and map knowledge. Map knowledge is very helpful for finding paths that are less likely to be congested with players, or just knowing where players are more or less likely to walk. Your movement comes into play with avoiding the fire of players that you do encounter. Map knowledge is also very helpful when it comes to knowing the locations of ammo packs. As mentioned before, if you're using stock invis or any of the reskins, you can refill mid cloak by picking up ammo packs. If you know the locations of ammo packs on a map, and how likely they are to have been used up at a given time, it can allow you to plan out where you go to get behind the enemy lines while extending your cloak with ammo packs. Just know that people can see health and ammo packs disappearing. Let's have a practical example. On Bad Water, as Blue Team, the tunnel where the cart goes isn't usually subject to crossfire until someone pushes the cart into it. When coming out of the tunnel, there is also an ammo pack to the left to refill your cloak that by this point in the round is unlikely to be used. Engineers like to sit up here, and snipers like to sit here. Alternatively, if the path below is being spammed or you want to get behind faster, you can take the path to the left, snagging the big ammo pack here, or decloaking amongst these rocks. Or you could go through the area to the right and use the open area to try and avoid crossfire. Those were the options you had on just the first point of Badwater alone. Imagine that thought process for the entire map. 
That'd make a good series, actually. Hmm. Spite checking is something to be aware of, especially if you've already been causing problems <laughs> for the enemy team. Pyros are particularly good at catching you out for obvious reasons. But again, the best thing you can do against spite checking players is using open areas as it allows you to stay out of a pyro's effective range, dodge projectiles, and have bullets spread from classes like the Heavy, making it harder to track you. For example, the Intel Room of Capture the Flag Well is amazing for this. As this room is so big, it's incredibly difficult to find a good spy in here if he gets enough distance from you. Patience can also help a lot. Just waiting for a good opening can be what you need to get past. Though of course once you decloak, you don't want to decloak behind someone to discover they know what the decloak sound is. Unless you think they're really new, or seem to have their audio turned off. Dude, he's deaf to the Razorback! <laughs> Avoid decloaking right behind players in quiet places. Though, there are a few tricks to mask the sound. 1. Using walls or being in another room typically makes the sound harder to hear. Without going too much into the specifics, a good thing to do is break line of sight before decloaking. 2. Using other sounds to mask the sound of the decloak. As when there's not much other sound, it's pretty easy to hear one isolated sound. But when there's lots of other noise going on, it becomes really difficult to make out individual noises that come from the game into your ears and go into your eardrums. So yeah, anyway, plan things out, don't get bumped or hit by crossfire, and don't be silly with your decloaks. But now, for the other use of cloak. Get in with cloak, get out with cloak. Unless you're using a certain knife. Backstabs are pretty loud, and when people locate a spy, they have this near irresistible urge to hunt them down. Knowing this, we should learn how to get out of those situations. First thing to note is, like I said before, backstabs are loud. Unless you're confident the enemy is really distracted, it's good to get into the habit of cloaking immediately after kill, so that by the time anyone reacts, you're already in the process of getting away. Another big tip is to pick your fights. As good as you can get at evasion, you can't just play like an overly aggressive scout and get away with it. No. Don't put yourself in those situations. The spy is very easy to kill if caught out, so just be careful. Of course, when you cloak, people can see the direction you went when you were cloaking, which may seem like a weakness, but in reality, it allows you to create illusions. Cloak illusions are when you fake doing one thing while you're cloaking, but instead, switch action the moment your cloak is complete. Ha! The most basic example of this is running one way when your cloak starts, and immediately changing directions once oh. you're fully cloaked. Using this trick alone will drastically increase your survivability, but note that if for any reason you become temporarily visible, i.e. damage or debuffs, you'll want to change direction again. If you're taking sustained hit scan damage, like from a sentry, minigun, or SMG, Break line of sight as quickly as possible, so you can't be tracked. You can get creative and pretty erratic with your cloak. You can even fake jumping off a ledge if you get good enough at movement. Now, of course, if someone just fires a few stray shots at you, sure, that's not too bad, but when you get hunted, this is when your evasion skills are truly put to the test. So, let's just take this example. Here, there is a pyro that is chasing us, and intends to bring us... So, how do we escape him? Well first, let's think about what he's thinking. Let's think about what we would do if we were the pyro. Alright, we've got another thing, he's gonna go up there, take the ammo, just gonna help we went in there, he's gonna go for the big health and ammo, go right down here to restore and get yep, there he is, I'm just gonna air blast him off the cliff like that, and then I'm just gonna to taunt, he's just really funny. But of course, we aren't the pyro here. We're the spy, and we've just predicted his prediction. So... 
Alright, we've got another thing. He's gonna go up there. He took the ammo. Just gonna help. He went in there. He's gonna go for the big health and ammo. Right down here to restore. And get... Think about what they would think. Predict what they would predict. Use that knowledge to go against the prediction. People catch on to the fact spies like to run for the nearest health and ammo, so mess with that expectation. Also, people like to check corners a lot, and that's fair, they are good hiding spots. But, once people check a corner, they tend to consider it to be clear. So, jump into the corner after it gets checked. Most people do not think to check twice. Try and watch what they're doing when hunting for you, and try to find ways to back out of an area they think you're still in. If you're able to trick them into spy checking an area you've already left, you buy yourself a lot of time, and waste a lot of fears. But do remember that running away isn't your only option, for you should know that SPY IS A GUN! It has really good range and is especially effective on pyros chasing you from a distance. Speaking of classes you're faster than, it's also worth noting that Spy is the second fastest class in the game alongside Medic, only beaten by the Scout, so as long as you aren't running backwards, you can outrun most other classes. Even if you're disguised as a class slower than you, you retain your full speed even while partially cloaked regardless of disguise. But you don't take knockback from anything other than Air Blast while disguised. Why is this important? DAMAGE SURFING! Soldier and Demo can use explosives at their feet to launch themselves. So, why can't you? Timing a crouch jump with a rocket landing at your feet is a really good way to put some serious distance between you and your pursuer. The Cloak and Dagger is really good for the more slow and methodical spy playstyle. It drains based on how much you move while cloaked, but standing still allows you to refill it while cloaked. However, you can't pick up ammo to refill it while cloaked. The fact you can stay cloaked indefinitely makes this watch really good for waiting in an area for a moment to strike, but the lack of mobility while cloaked can be a hindrance. When getting behind the enemy, you'll often find yourself having to stop to refill cloak. When it comes to making escapes with the cloak and dagger, you can rely less on movement and more so on individual hiding spots. Since you can sit in one spot, you can often trick players into thinking you've run further away than you really have, only moving when required. Worry slightly less about cloak management using our helpful little utility gun, the Latron J. Simply equipping this gun gives you a massive 40% extra cloak duration, with the added benefit of restoring 50% cloak on hit. Warning, side effects may include 20% damage penalty. Whether you're a newer spy that needs a bit of extra cloak, an experienced spy wanting to get more mileage out of it, wanting to reduce the low mobility of the cloak and dagger, nullify the reduced cloak of your eternal reward, or regain cloak faster for your dead ringer, this gun has a bit of fun for everyone. I used to have to worry about running out of cloak, uh, but with the le, le, tr le, le, tr le tranche, I can worry a bit less about my cloak, though. I wish I could be using the diamond now. What did you say? So try it today. Anyone can benefit from the utility of this gun, but nobody can pronounce it. Required to avoid detection. I have to admit my bias here, I do not like this weapon. Basically, you lose the ability to cloak on demand, but it can be used to fake your death by taking damage when you pull it out. The only issue, it's often really easy to tell when this happens. So more often, people will just use this as an escape tool, or to force their way past the enemy. The issue, you cannot restore cloak from ammo, period. And this thing requires a full charge to even use, and the decloak sound is Really loud! If you get caught in your decloak position and people won't get close enough to be trick stabbed, you're basically screwed. Um. And since the cloak is instant, you can't even create illusions. Gotcha, Crota! Oh no! Because you require damage to even cloak, and most players can detect the fake death, they most often know when you're coming and are more prepared for you when you show up, unlike with the other two watches. 
It is worth noting that if you disguise as a teammate, you can fake their death instead of yours, which can help prevent people from noticing you, but that loud decloak isn't helping. The cloak is a tool for getting in and getting out. Use your map knowledge, movement skill, and mind games to accomplish both. It'll take practice, but when you know what you're doing, you'll vanish as quickly as you appear from nowhere. Like a wolf among the lambs. Yeah, I, you yeah. do. Yeah, so I, so I actually did, uh, not that, 